What is going on, YouTubers? Game player back with another quick zombies. Kind of a tutorial how to type video this time, though. We're on the map buried, and I'm looking at today getting about 5,000 points or more by round one. Now, a lot of people know this trick, and a lot of people know how to do it, but for those of you who don't, you've come to the right place. So, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to draw that Remington on the wall. And a lot of people do that right off the bat as well, you know, a quick thousand points round one, that's a good thing. Good start to it. Now, the next people usually do is they get this big guy out of the cage here. They give him some booze, and he breaks the barrier right in front of him. Now, some people actually um, don't know that when they break the barrier, they get points for it. A lot of people figure that out quite quickly, but just in case you don't, that's a quick heads up. So when you break that barrier, you're going to get 200 points for that. Now, taking the two... 100 points and the 1,000 points you've already gotten, plus the 500 you start with, you're going to open up that door to get to the top of the gunsmith's. Now you're going to go downstairs into the gunsmith's house, and you're going to grab any one of the chalk drawings on the wall. My personal favorite is the AN-94. That is a great weapon for headshots, and it's a great weapon all the way up to, like, round 15 without pack-a-punching it. But, if you follow my steps, you're going to be able to pack-a-punch it by round 1, if you wish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the stairs here, and I'm going to draw it on the wall right here. Now, the reason I draw it up here is because the AN-94 is more expensive than some of the other guns on the wall in there, and I prefer to get a cheaper gun to start off with, but yet still get a guaranteed gun. Sometimes hitting the mystery box in this map, you can get a time bomb or monkeys. They're not helpful in round one because you really need a weapon. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to grab the PDW-57 off the wall once I go downstairs. Now this gun costs a thousand, and that's the one you're going to be really looking at to pack a punch if you're interested in pack a punching on round one. This time around, when you come to the end of the video, you're going to see that I am not going to pack a punch this round. I'm actually going to finish this game off and end up pack a punching around round five. That's going to get me um, plenty of points, and I'll walk into that maze area with an AN-94 juggernaut, um, stamina up, and the PDW-57. So now that I've drawn the two weapons on the wall, I'm going to find the other booze bottle. Now, two booze bottles spawn during round one. Sometimes they can be they can respawn in the jail cell where you get the big guy after you have them smash that barrier. But nine times out of ten, there's going to be one in the bar. So using the points you just got from drawing the weapons, you're going to grab another booze bottle from the bar. You're gonna, oh, I start with this barrier personally, but you can start with any barrier you'd like. The reason I start with this one, though, is it can get you a lot of points if you do it right. And having those a lot of points will help you when you're further along these steps because you have to buy the booze starting now. Now that you used up that one, it's all stuff you have to pay for now. And it costs a thousand each time you buy the booze. So the whole goal of smashing these barriers is you have to be far enough away to make back your thousand points that you lost for buying the booze. Plus an additional however many points you can get, the more the better. That's how you get to your 5,000 or greater points. Now, some of these barriers also help because you're going to open up other wall buys, other uh, areas that you can draw the wall buys on, and that's really going to help you out because, again, that's another additional 1,000 points that you can just break even when you buy the booze. So he's going to go smash another barrier, and I'm going to run over here buy another booze. Smashing this as my second barrier is my option because that opens up the whole rest of the map for me. Now, I'm going to take this guy, attempt to get around him, and once I do, I'm going to come over here, and I believe I'm going to open up the witch's house next. Yeah, it looks like I'm lining up to open up the witch's house. Now, the reason I open up the witch's house next is because that's going to get me to uh, the track to Pack-a-Punch. Now, having this open is neat to have Pack-a-Punch there, but again, I'm not ready to go in yet. I need a couple more bears and a couple more wall drawings to get there. Now, one thing you're going to notice, though, is I keep avoiding zombies. I don't kill any of them. I barely even hurt any of them. What I did just there was I had a few lined up, and I just shot them a bunch of times. Uh, unloading a clip into the zombie's legs on round one is going to get you an easy 80 points off of each zombie you do it to. And then you'll notice I take the big guy, knife him so he runs fast, and when he's running fast like that, he'll knock down the zombies and cause them to respawn. He won't kill them, which is a big part of getting this done on round one. The problem is, if you start running around and knifing zombies, the chances are you're going to get something like a nuke. And you can see exactly where that's going to go. If you get a nuke on round one, it's going to be round two, and you've lost your chance to get 5,000 points by round one. 
So what I do is I just avoid the zombies. I keep them up and alive. I just keep running back and forth, get booze, go to him, get booze, go to him, get booze, go to him. You get the point. It's basically the same process over and over again. It really just depends on what barriers you want to get done first. And there's me. I'm going to kill a few more zombies. Well, not kill. I'm going to injure a few more zombies, get a couple points off of them. And I'm getting a little stuck because they're trapping me in the doorway. And i got to run by them. And I've got my booze back now. I'm going to take him. There he is. Come on, buddy. There we go. So next, a really nice thing to open up now is the church. The church is a good option because not only do you get a nice barrier open for it, but um, you also get a free wall draw. And what I mean by that is once you open up that barrier for the church right there, you don't have to pay for any more doors <clears throat> to open up to a option where you can draw a weapon on the wall. Now, one of the places you can do that is the bar. Upstairs in the bar, you can buy a $750 door and get up there to draw a weapon. Now that's nice too because you pay 750 to get upstairs and then you draw the weapon so you're not you're actually going to go above breaking even. You're going to gain 250 points. At the end of the day, it isn't much, but you're going to want to open up that door anyway. The reason you're going to want to open up that door is because it gives you access to power, and the power you're going to have to turn on to get any of the perks. The other thing gets you is candy. Candy I'm going to use later in the video to stop the mystery box at the current location is in. It's always nice, I think, to have it in the starting location because that way it doesn't go anywhere. And once he hits it, it's really nice for it to stay there because you've got access to it everywhere. So here I am. I'm going to go upstairs in the bar. I'm going to go onto the roof, and I'm going to draw the SVU on the wall up here. Personally, I don't like the SVU much, but hey, it was a 1,000 points. It was totally worth it. Now I'm going to jump across, and I'm going to go turn the power on. I'm going to find my candy. There we are. And activate the teddy bear. Uh, Always Running is the song for this map, the Easter egg song. That is a really good song. Personally, I actually bought it off iTunes because uh, I liked it so much. Definitely, I think, uh, worth it. Oh, wow, I'm actually killing them. That's that's surprising. Um, definitely a good song. I, I love the song, so I always play it whenever I'm on the map. That's what I strive for, even if I think I'm going to die or for, even if I'm just giving up. i got to play the song. I love it. So here I am, I'm going to take them over the mystery box with the candy, and get the mystery box to stay there. Like I said, I personally think it's a personal choice, you don't have to do this, this is totally optional. Alright, so he's going to smash the box. Awesome. Now beyond this point, a lot of what I'm going to do is being opinional and optional, so I'm going to grab Jug. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab the PDW57 off the wall. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab the AN94. Those are all personal preferences. See, a lot of people like to take their points and they like to go pack a punch. But uh, my philosophy is, why don't you get the guns? Don't pack a punch them. Just get nice weapons so you can just use them in the early rounds. Because it's just a waste to have pack a bunch of weapons on round one, two, three. That's a waste. You can do it, but I still think it's a waste. You're wasting expensive ammo that you really don't need to be using. The AN94 is a one-hit headshot kill for the first two rounds. And even, I think, into round three. Then it becomes, you know, two, and then slowly becoming three, four hits. The Andy and the 4 and the PDW-57 are very strong weapons, and you don't need them pack a bunch yet. That's why I'm choosing not to. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the big guy, I'm going to go grab some more booze, and I'm going to smash that well open. Again, this is a personal preference, but it's a fantastic idea to do on round one. That's why I've been saving the less, um, rest of my points. So I'm going to take the big guy over there, and I'm going to try and get as many points as I can off smashing this well. The well you want to smash out here, because once you're in the maze, it's um, if you go to the center and you find that well in there and you break that open, you can then jump through and spawn back in the starting room. That is a great thing to have, because it's just a backup plan, just in case things start to go haywire. So I'm going to bring him far back in the church, all the way, as far as he wants to. And I'm going to ram and send him straight towards the well. Now with the remaining amount of my points, I have just enough to go into the witch's house. So I'm going to head in there now. 
avoid this guy, open up the door, and I'll have not many points left, I'll have 730 points left. Not enough to pack a punch by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm going to have the doors open. Okay, I'm going to activate the second teddy bear, and I'm going to fight through a couple witches. Now, one thing you want to remember, if you're going through the witch's house and you're going to pack a punch, you cannot be hit. If you're hit, I don't think there's any way to get enough points to be hit by a witch and still pack a punch when you come out. So it's tough. This part's really tough, but if you see, I've got a really neat strategy down here. The PDW57 is fantastic for taking the witches out on round one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn around and make sure there's no more witches following me. And you can see that there are. This is really awesome because these guys will drop perks if you kill them outside the house. It is the best thing for round one to just get free perks. So a lot of people, that's why they won't buy Jug or Speed or whatever other perks they want on the round one when you're getting a lot of points. That's because they're going to go through the witch's house and again, nine times out of ten, the witches are going to come out and you're going to be able to kill them and get a free perk. Now, I usually take Jug because, like I said, I don't pack a punch on round one. What I do instead is you're going to see me go to the middle area where you have the well in there. I'm going to break open this well using four grenades, which a lot of people think you need a ray gun for, but I'm here to tell you, you don't. You just throw your four grenades in there. As the last one blows up, you're going to see that the thing will break. I look inside, and there you have it. There's your little portal to get to the starting room. Thanks for watching, guys.